like pretty much any cookie. Oh, I, I, I agree with you there. <laughs> do you have a good sugar cookie recipe? You know, I don't make those that often. Uh, I do use the sugar cookie crust oh. to make lemon bars. Oh, I think we have our next uh, recipe. Yeah, that will be you. fine. I'd be happy to do it. <laughs> well, we have uh, questions with Chef Dad this morning. So our first question coming from Paula. And she says here, I heard you mention leaving a steak out for an hour or so before grilling it uh, for even more cooking. Is it even okay to do that? Out. With, oh, even cooking? For more even, even cooking. cooking. Yeah. So is it okay to do that with thick pork chops? You know, uh, the standard rule, you know, for, you know, beef, yes, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when it comes to any pork or poultry, no. I would not take that out prior to cooking simply for safety reasons. Okay. All right. So our next question, Marcus. Marcus has a question about ribs. Yep. Mm. Love so them. Marcus says, do the St. Louis cut of pork ribs follow the same cooking method as the baby backs? You know, basically, yes. Uh, but there is a modification that you'll want to make because the St. Louis ribs are thicker and have a, much, a little bit more meat to them. So what you're going to want to do is... Bake, when you're baking them to, uh, you know, before you put them on the grill, mm -hmm. to loosen up the meats and all that sort of stuff, I would go four to five hours at 250 versus two and a half to three hours at 250. Uh, and that'll moisten it up because when you look at the rib, you've got at the very top of the animal, uh, starting down its back, you got the baby backs. And then this long portion here is the spare rib, but if you cut off the very bottom couple of inches, which are the rib tips, mm -hmm. then you got the St. Louis cut. It's a perfectly tri uh, rectangular shape, and it's the meatiest rib mm. that the animal has. I would like the meatiest rib. Do you okay. have one of those right now? You know what, Tammy and I had those uh, on the 4th of July. Oh. And boy, were they good. You made them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our last question comes from <laughs> Ashley. She wants to know, how can I tell what amounts of which ingredients are in packaged foods at the supermarket? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you go to the supermarket and you buy, uh, you know, foods that have labels on them, not every one of those labels shows the ingredients list. A lot of them will show you, obviously, the nutritional yeah. facts. But the ingredients list is a whole different uh, animal. And what you'll see there on that label, sugar, inverted sugar, blah, 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 those, the first ingredient on the list is the majority of what's in mm -hmm. that uh, particular item. Uh, Jamie, you guys know that from uh, the candy store. You know, if you're going to list the ingredients. We put love first. Love first, and then your sugar. Mm -hmm. But no, I mean, that's, that's where you got to be, you know, when you're looking for ingredients. So if you're allergic to something, and you want to look look for the ingredients list, the first item is the majority of what's in there. What are you going to make for us later? You know what? It's a 1,000 degrees out. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. Thank but uh, no, it's not our buddy's <laughs> fault. But anyway, uh, we're going to show people how to make a really delicious sun tea. Oh, yum. Yeah, it's really good. Sounds good. Okay. Well, if you have any questions for Chef Dad, you can email him at questions at chefdad.com.